you for coming today and spending your time with me. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about my journey and what it means to have XXY. Uh, there is a huge um, lack of education out there about what I've experienced in my life and uh, I've been given basically a second chance at life, which we'll talk about a little bit more as well. And in that second chance, I've decided that I'm going to use that to advocate for other people like myself, uh, because that's certainly something that's needed out there in the world today. So let's start a little bit. If you saw my poster at all, it, it talked a little bit about my life having Kleinfelter syndrome, also known as KS, and then also known as XXY. But really, XXY and Kleinfelter uh, syndrome are two totally different things. So Kleinfelter's syndrome, which was known, uh, which was named for Richard Kleinfelters. He was not the scientist that discovered it, but he did receive naming rights back in the 40s. And so he named it after himself. Um, that was so great of him. Um, it, it, it also happens in females, which a female scientist discovered it and then gave him the naming rights and he named it after himself and said it only really affected males. Uh, that's something that's in huge contention right now. Um, but essentially, Kleinfelter's is a disease of the testes, and it, and it pretty much just has to do with that. XXY is a chromosomal variation that happens during the developmental stages of birth. It can happen in women and men, although more men tend to have it than women. Uh, not everybody that has XXY will have Kleinfelter's, and not everybody that has Kleinfelter's will end up being XXY. So the easiest thing is, is when people say, how, how do I know if I have it? I, I certainly have noticed a lot of the characteristics that are now floating out there in myself. To know if you are XXY or if you have a sexual variation at birth, you need to get a FISH test, F-I-S-H. It is a blood test and it will let you know about your chromosomal carrier type. I was born 47 XXY. That means I have an extra chromosome, more than any of you do, and it's attached to every other gene and chromosome I have. So if you were to pull up my chart on a chromosomal chart, you would see it has an X, an X, and a Y, right? Males are often just XY, females are often just XX, but now they're figuring out that females can be born XXY. Some of the characteristics that XXYs exhibit is it's a spectrum. So you're literally being born right in the middle, not having enough characteristics to be deemed male at birth, and not having enough characteristics to be deemed female at birth. You reside somewhere right in the middle. And everybody that is XXY has different things that make them example. If there were two XXYs sitting up here right with me right now, they wouldn't necessarily have the same things that have plagued my body in theirs, but they do have that extra chromosome. The 47 is representative of I just have one, but there are people out there that may be 48 XXY, 49 XXY, and as that number grows, that's when you start to get into people that are born with Down syndrome or Turner syndrome. So uh, it's definitely something that affects more than not. Uh, just to give you a, as we get into my story, and you'll hear me touch on it a little bit more later, uh, there is a huge misnomer in the medical community that if you're going to have an intersex baby, right, and that covers all of those sexual variants in the middle of XX and XY, if you're going to have an intersex baby, as of 2017, here in the United States alone, 65% of parents that were told they would have an intersex baby were advised to abort, and they did. That's a huge number. In Denmark last year, 80% of parents that were told they were gonna have an XXY baby or an intersex baby were advised to abort, and they did. And they're often told we don't know what you're going to be dealing with. Your kid may have all these amazing different issues. They may be on the autism spectrum. They may be, uh, have autoimmune issues. They may not have all the right uh, parts that they need. And so it's just
just better to avoid them and start all over. And the trade-off, and in all honesty, I've met thousands of people around the globe that have XXY, and they're doctors, actors, actresses, poets, painters, lawyers. It's not an end sentence. We shouldn't be killing off a viable life because you're not gonna know what's around the corner in raising. So let's talk about my story a little bit. I was born in 1975 in Auburn, Alabama, to two parents that taught at Auburn University. So they were educators. You figure the 1970s in Alabama, there was not a lot of literature out there about intersex babies and XXY. In fact, my parents were told that I was born male, that my genitalia was a little small, but for all intents and purposes, I was male. And so that's how my parents raised me. And then when I turned 17, I was going to high school here at Lake Highland in Orlando, Florida. My dad was the president of that school at the time. I was playing football, um, having struggles. I struggled my whole adolescent life with learning disabilities, ADHD, uh, anger issues were really easy, and these are all issues that affect a lot of XXYs because you kind of are already feeling that you're different as you grow up, but you really don't have anybody to talk to about it. You don't know anything about it. You don't know why you're suffering, all these things. So I went through a lot of therapists. I went through a lot of anger issues. I was in constant cahoots with my siblings and my parents. And at 17, I went to a doctor here in Orlando at uh, Pediatrics of Orlando, who had studied Kleinfelders and XXY in college. And he said, I think you need to test your son because he's not showing any signs that he went through puberty. So they tested me and they found out that I had Kleinfelters, which is that testes disease. They said, look, his testes have never really descended um, and they probably won't. And he has XXY, this extra chromosome. So my parents said, well, what do we do? And he goes, well, he shouldn't be playing football. One good sack will probably kill him. It's got, he'll have an awful autoimmune issue, and he's got poor bone structure. And, uh, but let's go ahead and put him on testosterone, because that testosterone will make him more masculine, because he's a male. So I started taking 200 milligrams of testosterone by injection or patch every two weeks. That's a lot of extrogenous testosterone. In my 20s, after going to school at WVU for theater, I moved to New York, and I had a prostate cancer scare at 22. And I went to my doctor at the time, through equity, and the doctor said, I know nothing about XXY, and I know nothing about genetics, and I know nothing about really what you're going through, except that you probably had this cancer scare from all the extra extrogenous testosterone that you've been on. If you can live with a higher voice range and a little more feminine qualities in your life, I would get off the testosterone. Because if you don't, by 40, you may have some serious medical issues. Okay, that was a no-brainer for me. I got off it. And I thought I was a gay man at the time and I was doing drag, and so the higher voice and all that didn't bother me, and socially it didn't bother me, and I went on to start doing theater and Broadway, and it just didn't bother me socially. So, uh, long story short, in between, after New York, I moved out to LA, I started doing television and film, appearing in shows like Desperate Housewives, with Lee, and CSI, and mostly was being booked as a female, which I thought was fine because of the drag and um, had always felt my entire life like I was both, right? Always felt a little bit male, a little bit female. But after that prostate scare, I'd never gone back and done any research on what it meant to be an XXY. Because I just kind of didn't care. And I felt like it didn't have any bearing on me. In 2013, I was living in LA, working on the Queen Mary uh, in Long Beach, which is a haunted cruise ship hotel, and uh, I shipped a tooth. And so I went to a dentist, and I said, I think I need a root canal. And the dentist looked, and he said, 
Uh, you actually need 32. He goes, your whole mouth is riddled with root canal issues. And he goes, I can fix every one of them. You could be in a chair for the next year or two years, but there's nothing saying that you wouldn't have to come back in later on and then get more root canal stuff. What do you want to do? And I was like, hmm. He was like, you know what, let's just take them out. He's like, you were dentures, they'll be fine. I was raised Christian, so I, of course, called my parents and asked them, is this something that I should do? What do I do? And they were like, you know, you get your teeth fixed. So if that's what they're offering, and that's what you can afford on an actor's salary, get your teeth fixed. I believe that the universe and God leads you in directions that you need to be in. I started having those teeth removed and found out that I suffered being XXY from something called tontodorism that a lot of XXY children and males and females get. It's bacteria of the bone in your mouth. Had they not removed all my teeth, they wouldn't have realized that I had it throughout my jawline. So they removed all my teeth within two weeks, broke my jaw in four places, scraped all the bacteria out. It could come back at any time because that's just one of the issues that we suffer from. And then they gave me dentures. That in itself was enough for me to be like, oh, uh, what's going on with my body, right? I hadn't had any big issues since the prostate cancer scare, but now as an adult actor in my 30s, I've lost all of my teeth. I found out later that if we hadn't have moved in succession so fast during that dental issue, that the tontodorism could have caused my whole facial structure to slide. Because I was born both, and I have so many issues. I got that fixed, and about a month after that, I got bit by a brown recluse spider on a vacation. That bite turned into one of the worst nightmares of my life. I almost lost my entire leg. Because of the way my body heals, and because of all the issues that I had from being XXY that had yet so at that point in time, I started to join groups on Facebook. I started to research why is my body reacting this way, what's going on, and I started learning a little bit more about what I had, which is why it's important to not just listen to your doctors, but to absolutely do your own research. You'll hear doctors all the time say, stay off the web and but it really is important to advocate for yourself and find out what's going on. In 2015, I went to Europe to audition for Game of Thrones. Super excited. It was my first trip ever out of the United States. My first month in Ireland, I got bit on my toe, on my left foot, by something. I like to joke that it was probably a leprechaun, <laughs> right? But by the end of my trip and after my audition, I ended up spending an additional two weeks in a London hospital in Colchester, UK, because my toe had to be removed because of the way my body was reacting to infection once again. I remember the third day after surgery, I woke up and the doctor came in and he said, do you have any questions for me? And I said, um, yeah, how long have I been out? Three days. Oh, okay. We pushed everybody in this area. We pushed all their surgeries back to accommodate you. Your leg was sepsis you could have lost your whole leg. I'm thinking just the toe was removed, they unwrap it, and half of my foot is gone. And I literally remember thinking, how do you come back from this? The doctor came in and he said, you do know why all this is happening to you, right? And I said, I, I think so. And he goes, we study XXY over here more than any other country. Australia and the UK kind of lead the way in XXY. He goes, all of this is happening because of everything that you have going on in your body. And when you get back home, I implore you, start doing your own research. He said, example, XXY's intersect babies run extremely high blood sugars. In America, if you walked in in the state you're in right now, 
they would push you as far down the way to 80 to 120, which is the blood sugar norm for here in America, and, he goes, and they probably treat you, they may take care of you, who knows. But what they don't realize is XXY intersex people run high blood sugars. Doesn't mean you're diabetic. That's just where your body reacts to mine. I said, well, what was my blood sugar prior to surgery? He said, 860. Your norm is in the 400 range. But when you get back home, you need to tell them, I'm not diabetic. I understand that you need to treat it like that, but you need to learn a little bit more about intersex people and quit judging me and putting me up just against regular males or regular females because that's not the case. I came back from the UK, I started writing a blog, so everybody was like, you need to tell your story. Uh, Irene's gonna put the blog up now, feel free to read it. Nobody really reads it, I don't care. I kinda write it for myself. Some people are really afraid, but it's called Metamorphing Into Me, and it was really my way of putting down what I was going through, just kinda for other XXYs out there. And then I joined a couple of Facebook groups and started listening to stories from around the globe if what I was going through with my issues, other people were going through, and I was finding out that they were, but they were having a hard time finding the medical community that would assist and help them, because we keep getting put up against regular XY and regular XX, and our bodies are nothing like their bodies. In 2018, I was asked to go to the National Institute of Health to participate in a study about XXY. I really thought long and hard about it. I didn't feel like I needed to do it for anybody, but I wanted to do it for the future of intersex babies because it is important that we start being treated differently. And it's maybe important for other people too that they understand that what we're going through, they could have easily have, have gone through at some point in time. Uh, but I just wanted to make my mark and do better. I felt like this is my chance to contribute to what I'm going through. So I went to the study, it was a week long. The first day of the study, I walked out and they said, hey, heads up, did you bring anybody with you? And I said, no. I said, this is like a vacation. I don't need to worry about anybody while I'm here except for myself. And they said, well, you probably should have brought somebody with you. They were like, we're going to do a week of very intrusive testing on you. And by Wednesday or Thursday, you may have a major breakdown. And I said, I'm a, I'm a big boy, I'll be fine. Right, I can handle it. By Wednesday, I had a major breakdown. To the point that I had to leave the study early and go back home and just was sobbing over all of the information that I had already learned just from Monday to Wednesday. And that information included, you know you were born both. Correct. Extragenous testosterone, especially the kind you are taking, your body doesn't respond well to. You're different. You just don't respond well to the extra. A male that's in complete perfect health would have a normal free range testosterone score of anywhere from 630 up to 820. When I went into this study in 2018, my natural free range testosterone score was seven. I hadn't been on anything since the 20s when I got off the testosterone. Now my estrogen level was a little bit more, but it was pretty low too. Here are some of the things they told me during that week. You know that you had learning issues growing up. That's a great comment in the XX watch but did you also know that you weren't born with an Adam's apple? You were born with one ovary and one testicle, and they reside up in the area where your ovaries would have been had you been fully born female at birth. Right, remember I told you I was diagnosed at 17 with Fontfelters, which is a testes disease in men. They didn't tell my parents or myself at that time that one of them was an underdeveloped ovary. That's where they were both residing. He then said, when you get back to Orlando, you need to find a doctor that will remove them because you have precancerous cells all over that area. After the 
amputation, I draw strong feeling in both of my legs below my knees. So what we're saying that because of the diabetes, which we're not calling it that, but we are all calling it that, you have neuropathy. So that could grow. I still not ever regain the feeling below both of my knees in either leg or foot. They said you also have now osteoporosis and lupus, which are two very female diseases. You have osteoporosis of the lower back and spine, and you have lupus. And there's not a cure for that. Because of your hormone draws, and because of everything you've been experiencing, your female sized heart now, you have a partial uterine wall built inside you. You only have one choice. And that is, you need to be on copious amounts of estrogen yesterday. And I said, but if you put me on estrogen, that's gonna cause a full transition. I will swing all the way to the end of that spectrum. And they said, correct. And I said, uh, I think I need to go talk to some people in my life about this. I don't think I can make that decision on my own. And the doctor, there was a team of eight said, well, it really is just your decision. And I said, okay. Well, what if I go home, back to Orlando, and I continue to see my great doctors, and I don't go on the estrogen? And he looked me in the face and he said, it is our belief that if you go home and do nothing, which is pretty much what you've been doing for the last 20 years if you haven't been on testosterone, then in five years you'll be dead. Or you can start taking the estrogen, you can transition, and everything that goes with that, you can get the ovary and the testicle removed, you can have all the cancer taken out, and we can just go on a trial as by basis with all your future medical, and we can maybe give you another 10 to 15. So be dead in five, maybe live another 15. I remember calling my parents that night hotel just stop because my parents are very right-wing conservative Americans and I remember my dad said I would rather have you in any form than gone in five years and my mom said kind of well you know we'll make it a great five years it'll be great you know <laughs> she was basically saying no please don't transition It's been a second chance at life for me though. And the next day when I went back in to see Dr. Cherney, he said, I need to know that you're okay with this. I need to know that when you go back to Orlando, mentally, you're completely fine with knowing that you're gonna be comfy. He said, technically though, you've been female your whole life, but you've also been male. And I looked at him and I said, basically, you're telling me I've been in a Ford Pinto for 43 years. The air conditioner works, in. I have to roll the windows down sometimes, but I'm about to get a BMW convertible S-Class. Same driver, just a better car to finish the race. And he looked at me and he said, yeah, I like that analogy, absolutely. I'm good. I'll be good. That's fine, right? And I tell people that analogy all the time because I really am the same person. I am the same driver. It's just a better car. I mean, it's a better car. <laughs> I get things now in this body that I never even dreamed of having in my other body. Now the mental's hard, and I still suffer. The lupus is completely draining. There are days where I don't want to get out of bed. I'll sleep two or three days. Roommates will check in on me to make sure I'm breathing. The lupus also manifests in intersex patients in the form of wounds on your feet and your legs. So where I used to think I had the prettiest legs out of all the drag queens I knew, now I feel like I look like a cheetah because the spots just appear and they get worse. In June, I had skin grafting done on both my feet, and I spent my whole 
summer this summer with vacuum pumps coming out of my feet and my legs. It's hot. So much fun, right? Not being able to go into the pool, not being able to go to the beach. I live in Florida. Like, and so even my social life has kind of taken a backseat because I can't go do the simplest of things with friends. Going to Disney, which is where I used to work, and just spending the day in the park requires me to get a wheelchair because my hips will totally kill at the end of the day. And I just don't have the energy to do it. I do tell all of my friends, find that silver lining, take your crippled to the park with you, you'll get on all the rides a lot faster. Yeah, but you drive that wheelchair, you're a terrible driver. <laughs> so, I mean, there are ebbs and flows, <laughs> right? So I came back from that test at NIH, and I was blessed because the doctors in my circle here in Orlando said, let's do it. Let's give you the best life possible. Now you wonder how that may affect, how hearing all this may affect students are going into law. I always say, look, uh, you may come across a lot of issues moving forward as globally we're changing, right? It's not even so much of a trans issue. I'm intersex, but you're starting to hear a lot more about intersex people and trans people and how that community is being affected, right? There's a case right now at the Supreme Court level about whether trans people could be hired or fired. So you're gonna hear about it a lot as you grow, as you get older. And all I can say to you is now you're gonna leave this class and hopefully you'll go home and read some of the material I give you to read and you'll learn more about some of the issues that are going forward. But case in point, Adventist Health fined my urologist last year saying that the surgery to remove my ovary and testicle and all that cancer, which saved my life, was a transitional surgery that they did not approve. And he said, no, that's a life surgery. She would have died. She had cancer. And they said, we don't see it as that way. We see it as that was a gender reassignment surgery. And that's not what it is at all. But because the terminology out there, and because there's not a lot of information on XXY out there, even within the medical community, you're coming up against people that are denying what needs to be done, right? I want to talk a little bit going back to the abortion rates. We talked about Denmark and America earlier. There's a huge thing going on right now, especially in American medical communities, where they will tell young parents that have an XXY baby, male or female, you just need to give it more testosterone or more estrogen to virilize them. And what virilization means is, by taking that extra testosterone or estrogen, they're gonna become more like the baby they were born, right? So if you had a boy at birth, they're gonna say, just give him a lot of testosterone. Let's start when he turns six, way before he's even in that puberty stage, and let's just give it to him, and he'll become more masculine and be more of a man, and that's what you want. But then you're finding out that people that are doing that in their 20s, 25, 30s, are getting the prostate cancer, the bone cancer, right? My bone dexa scan last year was 2%. So obviously I would have, I would be below that level of what they feel is normal for people. So that's not necessarily helping that baby either. And you may be thinking that baby, he is a boy, let's make him more man-like. But that baby does not have a choice in that, right? So there are a lot of XXYs in the community who are saying, hey, slow your roll. Wait until they start to hit puberty. Have decent talks with them. You may even find that they don't feel male at all. And it's not so much of a transgendered issue, it's just saying, let them feel where they wanna be. I know a lot of XXY men that are fine being a little feminine and a little male, and they're happy being right in the middle. They don't wanna be fixed or changed, they just want help with their medical issues. I have a friend in Miami that has XXY, and his doctors for years have been telling him, you have horrible hemorrhoid problems. The issues that you suffer are hemorrhoid related. You should just have to burn off and get through that really easy, you'll be good to go. I employed, or implored him rather, to go do that NIH study. He went and did the study, 
and they came back and told him, you were born both. Your hemorrhoid issues are not hemorrhoidal. You are having a cycle once a month. And because you don't have a vagina, the only place for it to discharge your body is through the rear. He comes back to Miami. He can't get any help. He can't get estrogen. They keep saying, you're a man. Why would you want to change? You want to transition? No, that's not at all what he wants to do. He just wants to fix that issue because it's starting to flow over into his career as a construction site manager. And it's starting to flow over into his family life. And it's affecting his marriage. And it's affecting his relationship with his friends and his family. Some people are absolutely OK being right in the middle. Not every XXY you meet is going to have to transition. That's what I had to do to survive. There is a great site Besides my metamorphing into me, if you want to follow more of my stuff, you can go on WordPress and follow metamorphing into me. I don't write weekly. I'm a horrible writer. If grammar is an issue for you, stay away. <laughs> right? But it is tongue in cheek funny, and a lot of people like it. They just don't tell you to like it. So I literally have been like, I'm going to take it down. But for me, it's therapeutic to write it. So I saw write about dating woes and all these other things, and then medical woes too. But there's a great site called the XXY Project. This isn't actually him. This is Ryan's site. So um, uh, I'm not a fan of Ryan. Uh, he is, <laughs> I don't want to talk bad about anybody, but just know Ryan Bergonzi is not my friend. But um, the XXY Project is an Australian based project. Um, and they have stories and great articles from around the globe uh, focusing on XXY. And you can read accounts from people that have XXY and everything that they go through. Um, it used to be called uh, XXY Forum. I, I can find it and I can get the information to Irene if you're interested. That, that is it, the XXY Project, yeah. So um, they had a great section where they allow people from around the globe to write in about issues that they face. Again, we face a lot of the same issues. Females that have XXY often have heart issues and they end up dying. And males with XXY end up having lung issues as they get older. Not fun. Oh my God, I don't have any lung issues so much yet. Um, but it's a great way to figure out that there are a lot of intersections out there, right? And you'll be able to see their stories and kind of see what they come up against. Again, back here in America, it's just a lot of people trying to push that extra T at an early age, which they've already said it could actually be more of a hindrance as you get older, right? They think that that actually may cause diabetes and osteoporosis and all these issues that we face. So we need more research done in the Americas just about what it means to have it what it means to be having sex, and what does that mean going forward for our medical issues? Because there's just a lot of people will go into doctors and they'll be like, oh, oh, I know nothing about what you have. Sorry. I met, um, before we round out, I met a mother about three years ago through a group on Facebook. And we were trying to console her, and she had a lot of tears and a lot of anger. And she said, my baby was born in Utah no information about XXY or infant sex. We were told that he would probably be retarded and never amount to much. So we put him in a home. We tried forever to have children. My husband's now in his 60s and just had a triple bypass, and I'm not getting any younger. I came into this group for answers, and now I feel horrible because I can't teach my son how to do any of these great things or be in a great way. And he's 21 and he's stuck in a home in Utah. And when we pass, who's gonna care for him? And she goes, what I'm angry about is a lot of you in here have gone on to do great things amidst what you're going through. A lot of my friends, Kevin's here, Melanie's here, Irene, I've known for years, 
would tell you that I've always been a go-getter, but it was never important for me to care about anybody else. Not really. But having the second chance and being able to live, even if it's just for another 10 years, I feel like it is absolutely my voice that needs to go out and advocate for children that have XXY, for parents that are unsure where to go or what direction to go in. Because we are viable lives and we are doing great things. And I think on any spectrum, getting rid of a baby because you think it may or may not do well in society or it may or may not have a productive life, give that baby a chance. We are only going to learn about how to fix things and get better with things if we research and we educate everybody. My huge mantras are every moment is a teaching moment. Every moment. And if you don't tell people in your lives about the issues that you're going through, solutions can't be found. So instead of getting rid of everything and trying over again because we're lazy, why don't we go back in and say, how do we make this better? How do we make it better for the future? How do we make it better for the future generations? How do we make sure that they're not going through the same social, economic, and medical issues that we're going through? You fix it. And it's not going to be fixed in a day. Rome wasn't built, right? That's that whole saying, Rome wasn't built in a day. This won't be fixed in a day. But we're all humans. We all have many different things that make us special. And we all have many different and we need to be celebrating those and pushing forward as opposed to saying, let's give up and you can just try to get it. Right? Um, what's going on currently with me? I decided this past year that even among the lupus and even though everything kind of can keep me down from time to time, I miss being creative. So I auditioned uh, for a director friend of mine named David Wally in August for a new Halloween haunt here in Orlando called Dark Horizons. It's kicking my ass, right? It's Thursday through Sunday, and it's legitimately difficult. But I love being back in the creative game of things, and I love being able to be an actress. And if you come and see me at Dark Horizons, I won't look anything like this. Fair warning. Uh, but they do have a UCF night coming up next week. Tickets are cheap. You can uh, go online to jarphorizonorlando.com. If you use the code DHO1620, that's my promo code, you will get 20% off your general admission tickets, meaning that you will be able to get in with parking and experience the Dark Horizon vibe for under um, about $30, $31 per person, right? But it's three mazes and um, four bars, and a secret bar is hidden in my maze. So you have to find a coin that will give you access to that special pirate bar and ghost ship. Um, but please check it out. And like I said, they are doing a big UCF night next week. So we will be there with a lot of your fellow students. And we can't wait to have you. I'm also working on a documentary based on my blog advocating for others with XXY. Because it is a story that definitely needs to be told. When I was approached in February by a friend of mine at the Oscars, when he invited me to go, uh, and said, you need to be telling your stories. And I said, I just won an Oscar. And he was like, great, you can work on that too. But <laughs> your story needs to be told. And I was like, you're, you're right, the story does need to be told. So uh, we are finalizing budgets, and we are looking for investors and market placement. So I know that I'm Facebook living now too, so I just always say, you, you never know who's going to be in the room, right? We're also looking for uh, people that are connected to the LGBTQIA community that may have filming skills or may want to go into film. Uh, so, because it will be shot predominantly here in Florida, following kind of a day in the life with me and then talking to friends and family members that have known me both as Bradford, but now know me as Julie. Uh, thank you so much for giving me the time today. Thank you for opening your mind enough to learn about something new that maybe you won't be in, hasn't been in your wheelhouse before, right? It is important as 
we move forward and as you move forward and have talents that you're open to learning about other things besides what's in your wheelhouse. So I'm gonna hand it back over to Irene. Thank you very much. And I will be here afterwards uh, for any questions or if anybody wants to just talk to me. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Um, it's difficult. I mean, I think the body kind of figures out a way to move. You know, I mean, you put your brain forward. You're like, I gotta get to the bathroom. You know, so like, um, I have no feelings. So like, can I borrow you for a second? Yeah. So the joke is, I I can't feel this. She could, and she could break her hands off my legs. I can't feel that. I feel pressure from like when I walk. I can feel. It. Feel a weighted pressure, but I just don't have any sensation. So um, when I came back and I was rehabbing at my parents' house after the toe amputation, um, I went to go get on disability, and I took my dad with me because he's super salt of the earth stoic, and I just thought if I take him, I don't have to worry about telling my mom about any of the stuff. He can relay the message to her because it's just it's really taxing. And I remember going to, he was in the room with me at the doctor's appointment, and the doctor came in and said, I'm gonna have you shut your legs, and I'm gonna take this newspaper and I'm gonna drag it along your legs, and you tell me when you feel it. And I said, okay, so I shut my eyes. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. And finally I went, are you gonna start already? And he went, uh, I've been doing it. And I heard my dad make an audible gasp. When we went home that night, I remember going in uh, to the house, and my parents were having me stay upstairs, out of all places. <laughs> um, so I went upstairs, and I heard my mom say something like, what's going on? And my, I heard my dad say, we owe him a huge apology. See, I thought for the longest time,
become them because we don't have the ability to guess. And if you don't tell them, then solution. You know, it's kind of like if, if nobody ever went to a doctor and said, my kid has uh, a brain tumor, then some doctor down the road would never have gone to work one day and said, this seems to stop and we need to figure out a cure for it. So you have to share what you're going through. So I know I'm getting off on the tangent and everything, but just to answer your question, the feeling has not come back. Um, that's why I go to the park. I know what my limitations are. You know what your limitations are in your own body. Um, I have to be super careful. I put on a great pair of hose today to cover up some of my cheetah legs. And my friend Kevin came in and he went, what's going on in the back of your foot? And I was like, crap. Like, you know, because it just seems like every day you woke up with something X. So, I mean, I do have those days where I wake up and I'm like. And don't, it don't drive. Cut them off. Let's just cut them off. Oh, and I don't drive, but I don't drive not so much because of the mobility, because I'm a tough lady. You know, I have a friend that says you're a tough ass than a knife fight. <laughs> So, uh, which is very true of my story, and if you read more about it, you'll be like, oh, Jesus. But um, I went back in August after coming home from the NIH, and this is actually an interesting story. Um, when my mom was pregnant with me, she shared with the doctor at the NIH that she felt me shaking inside, and that they had taken my older brother to see Bambi, and that uh, I tended to be doing what Thumper was doing, when he stretches his foot out, right? And he's doing that kind of thing. So they, were, they thought that's what I was doing in the womb, and they nicknamed me Thumper. Super cute. I can't be mad that that's the nickname I got. You know, my older brother got the nickname Bing Bong, so I'll take Thumper. Um, but NIH said, you're exhibiting something that a lot of people with XX by intersex exhibit. We believe that you have epilepsy. So I went back in August of last year before I had everything else removed and all the ovaries and testicles taken care of, and they diagnosed me with epilepsy. And they said, that makes sense to us because you have seizures. I usually have them in my sleep. Uh, there are telltale signs that I've had them once I wake up in the morning. That's not something I necessarily want to share with all of you. But uh, it does make dating hard because you're like, don't get so close, I'm straight, I'm an old man. Um, but for the law says you can't drive if you've had, you know, a seizure within the last two months. So it's just knocked me out because I average one every two to three months. So I don't drive for that reason anymore. Um, people think it's because of the leg issues. I, I don't necessarily share that. So it does make travel, getting around hard. Um, I keep saying if I'm in the lottery, I'm just going to put a bulk of it like I'm But I do have great friends in the area that make sure that I get, you know, you have to surround yourself with people that really are invested in you. And so I have great friends that make sure that I get to speaking engagements, or that I get to doctor's appointments, or that I have a night out on the town doing bingo and fun on the house. Like there are friends that are invested and want to see the best for me, and so that always helps too. So there's, my big thing in the last, Four years is figuring out that I don't think anybody, I don't care what your religion is, I don't care what your background is, I don't think anybody gets to leave this physical plane 
for class. Thank you for working on getting my um, gender stuff changed because that's a whole nother ball of action.